Well, I have kind of an oddball video for you guys. Um, this is something I've actually never shown before. And that is uh, kind of the insides of an E30 188 mil medium case limited slip diff. Uh, this is a 373 limited slip clutch type out of an 87 325 IS. Uh, it, like I said, is 188 millimeter, so that means it's a medium case, which is the biggest diff you can get in an E30. Um, and I'm actually gonna pull it apart because I need to send the ring and pinion and the actual clutch center thing to Spain. Um, so anyway, yeah, I'm gonna pull it apart and just kinda show you the, well, A, how to do it, and then B, what's inside of this thing, because limited slip differentials are kinda witchcraft. They're very cool, even though the clutch type is kinda the most boring in how it functions. So here we have the inside of the 188. So deep down inside, submerged in oil in there, is the ring gear. You can actually see the face of it down here. Uh, then you have the pinion gear, which is bolted to the actual uh, carrier assembly, which has the spider gears and the clutch plates in it. <clears throat> inside of that little void, there uh, is a set of small spider gears. And what the spider gears let you do is when you do actually slip this thing, it will give uh, the differential the ability to give you a little bit of speed differential between the speeds on both of the outputs. So basically, if you were to push on this thing really, really hard in a forward motion and you lock the input, this would actually spin backward, but you're working against the torque, <coughs> sorry, you're working against the, uh, the friction with your torque inside of the clutch unit here. There are three kind of main types of limited slip differential. There's clutch, there's torsion, and there's viscous. Viscous just uses like a little torque converter inside to use uh, resistance and plates and oil to kind of slow down and increase the friction. And then torsion actually uses um, some worm and wheel sets. Uh, the torsions are absolutely fascinating. They're actually my favorite kind of limited slip differential, but clutches are better for track use. So uh, next up, uh, I'm actually gonna drain it that's not very exciting, but I'm just going to tip it into a bucket and drain it out for quite a few minutes. And then I'll come back and I will uh, yank the output flanges out, which I basically just do with a pry bar and a hammer. I'll show you that. Then we'll take the ceiling carriers out. Then this entire uh, uh, center section will come out. And uh, we'll be able to flip it over, hopefully if it's mostly dry inside. Put some shop towels in there. And then I will show you how to remove the uh, pinion gear as well as some bearings. So yeah, fun. So now I'm just gonna knock both these flanges out and how I'm gonna do that is grabbing my baby pry bar. I'm gonna set it in just like that. I'm gonna thwap the end of this thing until it shoots right out. Easy as pie. Now, if you're working with an E30 differential, a limited slip, or I believe even a standard open diff, you'll have equal length stub shafts. If you have unequal length, that means you have a uh, viscous coupling IX differential, just so you know. If you're looking at this and you're like, what? Mine doesn't look like that, that's why. Uh, next up, six 13 mils on each side. Rip those out and then uh, probably behind these bad boys, the seals will come out and the uh, whole center section will just fall right out of the diff at that point. Now we can get cracking. All right, so those are your seals and your uh, outer bearing races. These guys, shims. And then here is your center section. So you've got your actual LSD back here. And then up here, you've got your ring gear bolted to it. And you got bearings on the, uh, the outsides, which I press against the insides of these guys. Um, next up, I'm gonna yank this out. Uh, and I'm gonna Google it first because I'm pretty sure this is reverse thread. And you don't wanna mess that up because this is a crush sleeve and that gets bad. One baby problem. My 30 mil is a thick wall here and I do not have a thin wall axle socket. So I'm gonna have to grind this one down quite a bit, which, big deal, Harbor Freight socket. Uh, we'll give this a go. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Uh, not quite enough. It probably would work, 
going for a little more. God, that thing's hot. Uh, yeah, I think that's probably close enough. It's super duper hot. So if I let it cool down, I'll probably have better luck, but uh, I'm gonna give her a rip. I'm pretty sure this is Lefty Lucy. So I looked at the little start thread there and it looks like it's regular thread. Fingers crossed, hopefully I don't totally bork it. And there we have her, crushed sleeve, uh, pinion gear, uh, the bearing, no bearing race. That is still inside of the case, so I'm gonna send this guy some photos of these things. Make sure that's all he needs. I don't think he needs like the input shaft or anything like that. <coughs> I'm guessing he's gonna want this screw. Uh, in order to get this out, it doesn't just pop out. You will have to tap on it, but it doesn't take very much force, so just go slow. And don't nick it, because it's important to have good threads on these. Um, but yeah, that's essentially the inside of a clutch type 188 uh, E30 LSD. Pretty neat. Oh, good evening, everyone. It is very nearly uh, springtime in Minnesota. We are uh, getting into the high 20s, low 30s, and next week looks like even into the 40s Fahrenheit. So, back to some projects. Um, GL's going away, don't worry about that. Just replaced the air strut in that as you guys watched. Fiat's going away, just getting it cleaned up and ready for sale. Um, 850 needs the passenger side door pulled apart for window reg regulator stuff. Control arms, thrust arms. M5 needs a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, E30 M3, I think think is oh it needs a guibo and the red seat belts sl needs a hood pad uh, and some other crap merchilago we'll get to that in a second uh, needs a couple things one of them needs a clutch so merchilago factory wheels things got some just stupid matte black lexani 20s on it right now or maybe 20 yeah the 20s these are the factory 19s that had refinished uh, not perfect, but good enough for uh, what we're doing here. Uh, these wheels have a valve stem, which threads into one of the many holes on the wheel, as you can see there. And that is a standard thread, and the valve stem looks like this. Uh, when I got the wheels with the car, they were disassembled, unfortunately, and it only had two of these. Uh, I looked into it, and they are $327 a piece from Lamborghini. So screw that. Uh, a friend of mine came over one night, we were drinking some beer as we do, and he found these, which are for Fox Shocks suspension. They are a standard Trader Valve aluminum, O-ringed, and I put a little bit of thread lock on there, but these just happen to be the same thread pitch. Now, you can see the Lamborghini was much longer, it has a secondary O-ring on it, however, I think the o-ring at the top will be just fine because as these are bored down uh, what you're seeing down there is actually the rim of the wheel not the face so the face is bolted on to it as far as I understand I hope I haven't actually confirmed that yet but we'll head over to the wheel that is upside down here or isn't upside down but we can make it upside down let me get the tools off the face of this thing so there it's our valve stem hole. Um, boy, sure it's hard to see. But I, I feel like that is the barrel and not the face. I wish I had taken some pictures of these when they were still apart. Um, but as long as that is actually the barrel, I think we're gonna be good with these shorter valves. I don't know, they, they thread in, I already checked that. But, uh, I don't know. It almost makes me wanna like thread the Schrader in backward and put the longer end in with the uh, O-ring. It's already gonna be a nightmare to fill these things up. I'm gonna have to use that little extension piece that came with my little electric scooter just to fill with air. Um, but I think, I hope, I hope these work, cause these are $10. And those are, like I said, 327 or something, so. I don't know. I'm optimistic. I really want to get these back on the car because the wheels on it right now are just blech. They're so icky. First of all, you can't even see them because they're the wrong color for wheels. And the tires are the wrong size and they're like Lexani brand tires or something. I don't know. But yeah, I want to get these on. So 
I'm fingers crossed. I'm going to put those in and like, hopefully, hopefully they don't leak. <laughs> if they do, I don't know what I'm going to do, but, uh, I guess I could pull the faces off and like seal between the two or just maybe bite the bullet and spend the 327 bucks. But either way I can thread Lamborghini valve stems in when these are assembled, if they do leak. So I think I'm just going to go with that. Hope for the best. So wish me luck. Just to show you what we're looking like there. Pretty solid. They don't stick out quite as far as the uh, factory bolt. And before you rip on me for this, they couldn't pull a couple of the wheel bolts out. So I just had to powder over everything. The wheel bolts are obviously supposed to be like black oxide 12.9, but I had them powdered with the wheels because <clears throat> I don't really have four and a half grand to spend on a set of these wheels. So there you go. Uh, again, fingers crossed. Wish me the best. I really hope these work. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. I mean, it's not a, a sophisticated looking thing, but as long as this hole right there goes directly to the threaded orifice on the back of this, we are, we're set.